Let's get it over to Matt Dowd, who's uh, an ABC News political consultant. Uh, a, actually, I should say political analyst, but you also are a political consultant. I and was. Have and previous, was. Previous life. Oh. A reformed political <laughs> consultant. Yeah, that's hard. And has actually down. prepped <laughs> VEEP candidates for debates in the past. Let me ask you, have you ever seen a cycle where, uh, where the debates have been this important? And the, as a corollary to that question, is it possible if Barack Obama loses the, this election that it will be because he blew that first debate? The last cycle that I think that had this biggest, this amount of impact, and even that I think was slightly less, was 2004, when President Bush had a five or a six point lead going into that first debate, lost badly to John Kerry. That lead's evaporated. He was able to get it back to about a one or a two point, and it basically the final couple of weeks he carried a one or a two point lead into that. It, if in the aftermath that he had lost that race, it would have been because he wasn't prepared and didn't come to the first one. If President Obama loses this race, you can point directly to that first debate as the reason he lost this race. So Matt, how do you talk to your candidate about making these foreign policy issues relate to the average person? You know, these, for many people, they hear foreign policy and they think it's too complicated, it doesn't have, has nothing to do with me. Obviously, folks need to talk about, they, they, you know, they want to talk about the economy. So how do you do that? Well, I think that this debate really is a, is a much different kind of debate. And I think foreign policy is always viewed through, through the prism of the chair in the Oval Office and the commander in chief sort of test. And it really is a case of how strong and clear and thoughtful you are. Are, are you going to engage in the world as that leader of the United States? And so I think all of the vibe around this and whether you do well or not is not to sort of say can I understand where average Americans are on this but much more is do average Americans see me having the strength and clarity and the ability to operate in the world whether it's militarily diplomatically or economically and so I think tonight is much a much bigger commander-in-chief test and actually it goes back to what happened in the first debate if you really think about it Mitt Romney came across as much more strong much more assertive much more decisive if, if that same dynamic develops tonight, it is a big, big, big problem for the president going in. I think they both understand that. It's less about like, here, how do I explain what Iran has to do right. with somebody in Ohio? And much more to say, here's what I would do in this case, or here's what I am doing in case of the president. Uh, so, Matt, um, in the first debate, Mitt Romney came in, and it was not the Mitt Romney of the Obama ad blitz for the previous six months, right? It was a different Mitt Romney. He seemed more self-assured. He didn't come across as the monster of the Obama ads. Um, now, for months and months, the Obama campaign has been tying Romney to the Bush foreign policy. Um, how big of a factor do you think the, the he's just like Bush will be tonight? Well, I think that's going to be part of it. It's saying that if you like the Bush foreign policy, then you'll love Mitt Romney. And if you like the Bush advisors, then you'll love Mitt Romney. I think that's going to be, I'm sure, part of what the president's going to do tonight. But I think the president's also going to be in a situation where he's going to have to explain some things that are in current events. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to explain more. The L Libya situation is still, there's still a lot of questions related to it. Obviously, what's come up in the last few days about Iran and whether or not are we are we in some negotiation on having a negotiation right. or having a conversation is going to come up tonight. But I think it, in the end, it's going, to be, it, it's going to be how do you project strength in the course of answering the questions on a variety of issues. I think they're going to allow 15 minutes or so, this is my guess, that doesn't touch the economy. And then somebody's going to say, listen, the importance of this has to do with the economy. The importance of this is our trade. They're going to try to bring it back. But I think if they try to do that too early, they're going to look like they're trying to distance themselves from foreign policy discussion. You know, the tricky balance for Mitt Romney is he keeps saying we need a more muscular foreign policy, but it's easy for his opponent to portray that as endless war a la George W. Bush, right? Yeah, I think the dynamic, and it's a balance, and I used to have this conversation um, when Bush was president, there's a balance in the American public about how we project into the world. They simultaneously, the American public wants us to be feared, but they also want us to be liked. The public when they see themselves and so part of what happened during the Bush presidency they got the fear part down and all of that but they never got the like part down and the country actually American voters were like well no we want to be liked we want people to like us out in the world I think what the Romney campaign came has been trying to do and Romney is trying to do is President Obama's got the like part down but he doesn't have the fear part down and I think that's the balance and I think whoever captures that best in sort of a duality and so because you could have two presidents people presenting one case, here's what we need to do, we need to force our will upon the world, and here's somebody we need to do, no, we need to act diplomatically, when the country sort of wants you to walk that balance. So can you t talk to us about why we even chunk these into different debate topics, right? I mean, why not just have, why do we have a debate that focuses just on foreign policy? Do you think that it's because we're, that uh, folks are worried that these issues might not get discussed? Or is it, as you pointed out, that 
look, this is the commander in chief. It is the one thing that the president can actually have more impact on than anything else. Forget about the economy or the budget or all those things. Well, Amy, I think if you and I were in charge of the world, which would which be a, would which be be a beautiful so good. thing, please um, let that happen. I think that we'd have. Th I think, in my view, we'd have three debates that have a wide ranging on a topics that the economy is discussed at each one. Obviously, right. it has to be since it's a dominant issue. But the foreign policy is also discussed at each one because it be becomes part of the becomes part of the way people make their vote on how they how somebody projects themselves. Obviously, the debate commission and others want to sort of talk to us. <laughs> never phoned <laughs> us about what we should do. But I think in the end, you know, we obviously was split conversation at the town hall meeting. The economy will come up tonight, but in my view, it'd be much better system if we had three debates that had all the topics discussed at each one. So David uh, mentioned this a little bit earlier in, in, in his piece, but he uh, talked about that summer trip overseas from Mitt Romney. Um, how do you think Mitt Romney's aides feel about that trip tonight? I mean, are we going to hear when I met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Jerusalem, he told me X, or is Mitt Romney going to try to put that aside? I don't think he'll reference his trip, but he'll he'll reference his conversations. And obviously, he has a pre-existing relationship mm -hmm. with ben Benjamin Netanyahu related to his business experience. And so he'll bring up, I mean, I don't know who the first one's going to say, BB. I'm sure that will come up, and whoever <laughs> says BB first. I'm going to guess this. Mitt Romney. <laughs> as, as I'm going to put money yeah, on that right now. That guess. Um, yeah. uh, but, you know, the fascinating thing about this race is if you look back five months ago, the race and we've spent a billion dollars has been spent. We we're about to have three debates, a, a fourth if you consider the vice presidential debate. All the things that happened, and the race basically is exactly where it was right. five months ago. A one or a two point race five months ago, and that's where we are today, 14, 14 and a half days out. It's, a, it's actually a fascinating thing that the structure of this race keeps trying to force its way back to where it's sort of the status quo is, which is a one or a two point race. And it's possible, given how close the race is tonight, that as we said, something could happen tonight that could once again change the dynamic or make a key difference. Matthew Dad, we'll see you on the other side of the debate. Yes, Thanks sir. for joining us. Thanks. We appreciate it.